Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, I'm going to discuss finitely generated modules and the relationship with the ascending chain condition for modules, which is also known as the Noetherian condition. So let's start with uh, finitely generated modules. So we'll take R to be a commutative ring. And um, we define an R module M to be finitely generated. So M is an R module. If you can find a finite number of elements of M that generate it in the sense, if there exist elements M1, M2, Mn for some finite N such that every element M in M is of the form M is equal to A1, M1 plus A2, M2, plus A and M N for some elements A1, A2, A N in R. For example, if R is a field, then R modules are just vector spaces over the field. And a finitely generated R module is just a finite dimensional vector space over the field. In front, an example of an R module that's not finitely generated, we would again just take R to be a field and take an infinite dimensional vector space over the field. Now, uh, a very uh, help, useful property of R modules that we will use later on is the following. So, um, let's put it down as a theorem. So, suppose uh, M is an R module. N a submodule of M and suppose we know that N and M mod N the quotient module are finitely generated then we can conclude that M is also finitely generated. The proof of this is not very difficult. Uh, you just write down generators of n, generators of m mod n, and somehow using them, you construct a finite set of generators for m itself. So firstly, you write down generators. Let u1 up to ur be generators for n, v1 dot 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 vs generators for m mod n and now we'll put these together to construct a generating set for m now the problem is that these v1 v2 vs they are in the quotient space m mod n they're not in m so what we'll do is we'll just lift them up to m so let v i tilde in M be such that VI is VI tilde plus N. So it's the image, VI is the image of VI tilde in M mod N. Then I claim that um, this set, you take 
u1 up to ur and then you take v1 tilde up to vs tilde this generates m so what do i need to show i need to show that given any element m of m i can write it as a combination of these things multiplied by scalars so a linear combination of these elements so um so take any given any m in m let uh so so its image in m mod n is m plus n okay so this is an element of m mod n and uh, this uh, because uh, because this uh, v1 v2 vs generate m mod n is of the form m plus n is of the form um a1 v1 plus a s v s okay and so that means that m is of the form a1 v1 tilde plus a s v s tilde plus some element n of n but then this element n is in n so it can be written as so this is for some a1 as in r and this n can be written as a1 as vs tilde plus b1 u1 plus br ur for some b1 br in r so at the end of the day we have written m as a linear combination of the vectors um, when the module elements v1 tilde up to vs tilde and u1 up to ur so the corollary of this is uh, if m and n well rather a special case if m and n are finitely generated r modules then m plus n is also finitely generated of course this may be much easier to prove than as a reducing it as a corollary of the previous theorem you could just take a generating set of m a generating set of n and take their union and that would be a generating set of m direct sum n uh, but uh, this is uh, i'll just explain the proof using this how can we think of m plus n as a module with some sub module and some quotient module so the point is uh, m is a sub module of m plus n and m plus n mod m is isomorphic to n so this sub module is finitely generated this quotient is finitely generated so by the previous theorem m direct sum n is also finitely generated it's a slightly different proof and uh, <coughs> one observation about finitely generated r modules so suppose our uh, module m is generated by m1 m2 mn then define an r module homomorphism so this rn itself r to the power n uh, which is r direct sum r direct sum r n times this is an r module and we define an r module homomorphism from this to m by taking uh, so in this you let ei denote um, the element which is zero at all places except for a one at the the unit at the ith place okay a coordinate vector so to speak by taking ei to mi and uh, 
what we have is that um, we'll call this map phi and uh, let k be the kernel of phi then m is isomorphic to rn mod k as an r module because whenever you have um, surjective homomorphism of r modules then the target r module is a quotient of the domain modulo its kernel a very useful uh, condition in uh, studying uh, finitely generated r modules is that of noetherianness we've already seen the noetherian condition for rings uh, remember a ring is said to be noetherian if every increasing chain of ideals eventually stabilizes so we can use the same idea for modules um so let's define noetherian modules so again r is a commutative ring and an r module f m is noetherian it's said to be noetherian if it satisfies what is called the ascending chain condition ascending chain condition what is this condition for every increasing sequence of modules so for every uh, set of sub modules of m maybe i should say sequence of sub modules of m see it starts with m1 which is contained in a sub module m2 which is contained in a sub module n3 and this goes on uh, indefinitely there exists a number n greater than or equal to 1 such that for all k greater than or equal to n mk is equal to mn so what we are saying is that this ascending chain of modules eventually stabilizes so you cannot keep getting larger and larger and larger sub modules indefinitely and uh, the relation to finite generation is uh, quite uh, straightforward to start with we can show an easy lemma that if m is noetherian then m is finitely generated well the way to prove this is by contradiction if m is not finitely generated then it's quite straightforward to construct an ascending chain that never stabilizes okay so suppose uh, m is not finitely generated okay so obviously that means that m is not the zero module um so there exists some non zero element um x1 in m okay so uh, yeah so let me introduce some notation over here so given a um, set of uh, elements x1 x2 xn in m i will define uh, this angular brackets x1 x2 xn to be the set of all elements of the form a1 x1 plus whoops i don't need the summation here an xn where a1 up to an belongs to r this is called the sub module of m generated by x1 x2 xn it's the smallest sub module of m that contains all the elements x1 x2 up to xn okay. so now since m is 
not the trivial module, I can take a non-zero element in M. And let's define M1 to be the sub-module generated by X1. So it's just all elements of the form A times X1, where A runs over R. Now, M1 cannot be equal to M because M1 is finitely generated and M is not finitely generated. So then I can take X2 belongs to M minus M1. And now let's define M2 to be the module generated by X1 and X2. Now M2 is strictly larger than M1 because X2 is not in M1. Now M2 cannot be equal to M. So I can define, take X3 in M minus M1. M2 cannot be M because M is not finitely generated but M2 here is generated by two elements. And so now you get the idea, right? So now I take X3 in M minus M2 and I define M3 to be the module, sub-module generated by X1, X2, X3. Proceeding in this manner, I get um, M1 properly contained in M2, properly contained in M3, so on, an infinite chain. This process will never stop because at each stage, I cannot have that Mn is equal to M because M subscript N will always be generated by uh, N elements. So it would be finitely generated R module. So we get this uh, strictly increasing chain of R modules which never stabilizes. So this contradicts the Noetherian hypothesis. Okay, so there's the first relationship between Noetherianness and finite generation. Okay, so um, Noetherian modules are finitely generated. Is that all there is to it? Is, is the Noetherian condition just the same as being finitely generated? The answer is no. The Noetherian condition is actually much stronger than uh, the condition of being finitely generated. And one nice thing about the Noetherian condition is that it goes easily from modules to sub-modules. Okay, so here's something that's easy to see that if M is Noetherian, N a sub-module, then N is Noetherian. That's the very nature of this Noetherian condition because uh, so we want to show that n is noetherian. So if you take submodules, an ascending chain of submodules of n, they will also be an ascending chain of submodules of m. So they will stabilize. So a submodule of a uh, noetherian module is noetherian. However, it is not always true that a submodule of a finitely generated module is finitely generated. Um, so this is where the Noetherian condition becomes very helpful. So let's prove the stronger uh, result about Noetherian and finite generation. Um, so theorem, and this is actually a characterization of Noetherianness. An R module M is Noetherian. if and only if every submodule of M is finitely generated. Okay, so not only is M finitely generated, every submodule of M should also be finitely generated. Proof. If M is Noetherian and N is any submodule, so let's prove that you know the submodules are finitely generated. So suppose M is Noetherian, and N is any submodule. Then of course N is Noetherian.
but we've just seen that every Noetherian R module is finitely generated, so n is finitely generated. Okay, so this side is easy. Let's try the other side, conversely. So we have to show that if every sub-module is finitely generated, then M is Noetherian. So let's start with an ascending chain. So suppose every sub-module of M is finitely generated and let's start with the chain m1 m2 m3 be an ascending chain now what you can do is you can take m infinity to be defined to be just the union n goes from 1 to infinity of m n and it's not difficult to show that m infinity is an R module. Okay, and uh, all this is happening inside M, right? It's the union inside M of M1, M2. These are submodules in M. Okay, so it's a submodule of M. And uh, so M infinity is a submodule of M. M infinity is finitely generated. So let's say M infinity submodule of M is generated by some elements x1, x2, xk of M. Okay. So each of these elements must be in M infinity. So xi belongs to m infinity, which means that it is in one of these mn. So xi belongs to, let's say, m ni for i equals 1 to k. And uh, just uh, means that uh, xi belongs to the max of uh, n1, n2, nk. Let's call this number n. So all the xi's belong to um, m capital N, but then uh, these xi's generate m. So that means that uh, m capital N is equal to m. It cannot be any smaller because these elements x1, x2, xk, they generate m capital, uh, they generate m and they're all in Mn. So Mn must be equal to M because that's the smallest R module containing X1, X2, Xk. Which means that uh, Mk is equal to Mn for all k greater than or equal to N. Uh, maybe I shouldn't call this N, maybe I should call this L for all L greater than or equal so here <coughs> we've characterized uh, Noetherian modules in terms of finite generation. An R module is Noetherian if and only if every sub-module is finitely generated. We saw earlier that if M is an R module and it has a sub-module N such that the sub-module N is finitely generated and also M mod N is finitely generated, then the module M itself must be finitely generated. Now, I claim that the same property holds for uh, Noetherian modules as well. The theorem is that, so you have this commutative ring R and suppose M is Noetherian. No, M is an R module, any R module. N is a sub-module of M. And suppose we know that n and m mod n are Noetherian. Then I claim that m 
is no ethereum in fact this uh, theorem will follow easily from um, the earlier result that i stated about finite generation and the characterization of uh, no ethereum modules as those modules for which every sub module is finitely generated so proof is we will just show that uh, every sub module of m is finitely generated So yeah, suppose M prime is a sub module of M. Then we'll try to find a sub module of M prime, uh, which is uh, finitely generated, and such that M prime modulo that sub module is finitely generated. So take M prime intersect N. This is a sub module of M prime, and um, this is uh, finitely generated because it's a sub module also of m n n is no ethereum so m prime intersect n is finitely generated and now i want to take m prime modulo n but n is not a sub module of m prime so i have to take m prime modulo m prime intersect n now the inclusion map of m prime into m so you have m prime goes into m uh, it's just a sub module so i just take the inclusion map and uh, i have uh, m mod n the quotient map and i have the quotient map m prime mod m prime intersect n <coughs> and uh, it's not hard to show that this is an injective map that is if something um, in m prime goes to zero in m mod n then it must lie in m prime intersect n well that basically i've said it so the only things in m prime that go to zero in m mod n are those which are in n so they are in m prime intersect n this is a sub module of m mod n so it's also finitely generated so this m prime has a sub module which is finitely generated and the quotient by that sub module is also finitely generated therefore m prime is finitely generated this means that m is no ethereum because every sub module is finitely generated so we've been proving all these technical results about no ethereum modules and finite generation now it's time to harvest the fruits of our hard work the first result that we can prove is that um to in some sense um the main result that we'll be proving from all this is that if r is a no ethereum ring then every finitely generated r module is no ethereum in particular it will follow that if you have an sub module of a finitely generated r module then that will again be finitely generated
any sub module of a finitely generated R module is finitely generated. See, for noetherianness, it's very easy to see that if a module is noetherian, then every sub-module is noetherian. That's, um, the, the, the noetherian condition is like that. But uh, for finitely, finite generation, that's not at all obvious. Why would a sub-module of a finitely generated module be finitely generated? And that's not even true in general. But uh, when R is a noetherian ring, this always holds. And noetherian ring abound, right? We've already seen lots of examples of noetherian rings. Um, all our Euclidean domains are noetherian. All our principal ideal domains are noetherian, in fact. Um, rings of polynomials in finitely many variables are noetherian. Noetherian rings are everywhere, and this very general theorem gives us a very strong result. So, how do we prove this? So the proof is uh, now very simple. So first point is, what is the relation between R being a noetherian ring and R modules? So the first point is that, uh, so suppose R is a ring, then R can be thought of as an R module itself. Um, how? Well, you just, uh, if given M in R, and R in R. So this is the module version of R and this is the ring R. Then you just define R dot M to be R M, the product in R itself. And you can check that R is an R module. This is sometimes called the regular R module. Okay. And then what are the sub modules of R? Sub modules of the R module R. So maybe I'll use it's it's very awkward to keep saying the R module R. So I'll just uh, this thing I'll write as R, and on the left I'll put a small R saying that uh, this R is acting on R. So R is a left R module. Sub modules of the R module R. These correspond to ideals in R. Here we are working with um, commutative rings, so all ideals are two-sided ideals. And so, R being noetherian ring, is the same as R as a left R module is a noetherian R module. Okay. Now I claim that R to the N is a noetherian R module. So this is just um, R as an R module, direct sum R as an R module, direct sum R as an R module, this direct sum is taken n times. And why is this true? Well, you can prove it by induction on R. This is R to the n minus 1, direct sum R. This has a sub module R n minus 1 and the quotient is R. So, this contains R n minus 1 as a sub module and R n mod R n minus 1 is isomorphic to R. So by this theorem that we proved that if um, you have an R module which has a sub module that is noetherian and the quotient with respect to that sub module is noetherian, then the R module is noetherian. So it follows that R to the n is a noetherian R module. Now, finally, every finitely generated R module
is of the form is isomorphic to Rn mod n for some sub module n of Rn. We already saw this when we talked about finitely generated modules. You take if there are uh, little n generators, then you just take a homomorphism from Rn to your module, uh, which take the ith generator to the ith copy in R, uh, to the ith take the ith coordinate vector in Rn to the ith generator in your module, and you'll get an isomorphism with Rn mod n. Now this Rn is no ethereal, so let's just uh, we need a small result here. If M is no ethereal, and N is a submodule of M, then M mod N is no ethereal. This is easy because. Um, Submodules of M mod N are the same as submodules of M containing N. Okay, so so if you have an increasing chain of submodules of M mod N, then um, you ju you just take uh, their pre-images in M. That's an increasing chain of submodules containing n. Just uh, if you have a submodule here s, then you just take it to uh, Q inverse s, where Q is the quotient map from m to m mod n. So, so the Noetherian condition for m mod n is a special case of the Noetherian condition for m. Just apply it to submodules containing n. So now we know that R is no ethereum, we know that Rn is no ethereum, and we know that Rn mod n is no ethereum. So we conclude that Rn mod n is no ethereum. Every, but every finitely generated R module is a form Rn minus n. So every finitely generated R module. is no ethereum so what we have is any sub module of a finitely generated r module is finitely generated so that's the main theorem of this lecture